And now from the Freedom First Sports Desk, it's First and Ten with John Apicello. Sponsored by... Welcome to week six of the big show. Tis the wedding season, so congrats to Ashton and Jake. And we are channeling the wedding singer with Billy Idol, of course, a recent visitor to the Star City. So while we're here, get out of my Van Halen t-shirt before you jinx the band and they break up. First and Ten's website is run by a small band. Leader is Jeff Williamson. They've got plenty of hits. WSLS.com, first and ten for all your high school football needs. Which brings us to the Southside Showdown, the Smith River Classic. And I think we've established I love a game that means enough that they designate a trophy or a bucket or a jug or something to play for, right? Tonight it's Bassett at Magna Vista in what is always a hard-fought game. Ten Sports' Eric Johnson was on hand tonight with bragging rights at stake. It's a rivalry that has yet to disappoint over the past five seasons with Bassett having won the regular season matchup the past three seasons. Magna Vista out to change that on homecoming night here in the hole. Let's get you out to the highlights for this one. That infamous walk through the stands for the Warriors before they hit the field and they found themselves in an early hole seven nothing. However, Ryan Martin hands it off to Penn State commit Tyler Johnson. He would show his worth here. Hit the sideline and said, get at me, bro. Houses the 48 yard touchdown. It's now seven. 7 to 6. Then the Bengals began to roar. The defense hungry. They must have had BK on the mind. BK, have it your way. Martin flushed out of the pocket. What goes up must come down. Jamari Johnson with the interception. Bassett lived in plus territory all night. Jerika's Harrison, his Jacob Gilbert, the nine yard score is 21 to 6. Bengals lead. We're still in the first half. And Harrison, he says night, night this time. Keeps it himself, scores it up the gut, 28 to 6. That defense nasty yet again. Simeon Walker Muse, the sack as Bassett was a runaway train that left the Warriors crowd stunned tonight. A punt before the half. Elijah Stokes fields it, finds a seam, slices and dices. Bassett up 35 to 6 at halftime. There were more stamps of approval from the defense and the offense, including a late pick from Jacob Gilbert as Bassett rolled to a 49 to 13 victory. When I talked to you the other day, I said AK Vision. We blurry out the background noise and we focus on what the goal is. And I preach and our coaching staff, I got the best one I feel like in the state of Virginia when it comes to building relationships with these kids. We preach something all week, they believe it. And when you start to believe something, it starts to come together. As the corners, we say no fly zone. Whenever the ball goes up, we go get it. And we come down with it. I feel like people really underestimate us. I mean, they scheduled us for the homecoming. So. For the fourth consecutive season, the Smith River Classic Trophy will go back to Bassett. It's the first of four trophies that they're hoping to win this season, as Coach Johnson told his team after the game. And that brings the head-to-head -head record in this rivalry at 9-9 nine nine since the trophy was first introduced in the early 2000s. In Ridgeway, Eric Johnson, 10 Sports. Thank you, Eric. As we continue to sort out the Piedmont District, I'll remind everyone GW Danville gave glass all they could handle a couple of weeks back. Tonight, hosting Martinsville, and we'll get you out for some district play there. The Bulldogs at 2-2, two two, G-Dub coming in 3-1, and, and Jacoby Dixon has got the rock. He's got some ramble and roll, and look at the shifty moves right there. They're in the red zone. Two plays later, it's Dixon, and he's literally trotting in right there with a little hopscotch move at 6 nothing. More G-Dub. Jeb Burns going up top to Will Daniel. Here's a nice play in the flat. He will turn burn for another touchdown. It's 13-0. We'll move to the second quarter. And O'Marion Hairston is our rolling ball of butcher knives. Watch him here. He's got the rock. And look at him go right there. You don't want to tackle that rolling ball of butcher knives. G-Dub, 39 to nothing is your final. Meantime, Patrick County, 46-27 over Tunstall tonight. Seminole District now on the top team on the 10-strong poll this week. Undefeated Liberty Christian traveling to Rustburg. That said, here we go, and here they come. LCA is going to jump out early, as in the first 15 seconds of the game. Opening kickoff, Gideon Davidson taking it all the way back. 7-0 Bulldogs. A couple of minutes later, LCA on a first and 10 from the 25. Davis Lane is going to keep him himself. Little stiff arm action there. He is coming down the line for the touchdown. 14-0 LCA. Still first first quarter. LCA on fourth and 14 from the 46. Davidson on the carry. He's gone and it is 21 to nothing. LCA. It would continue to go that way. How about 49 
to 13. The Bulldogs victorious. Halifax at JF tonight. The Comets come in 3 and 0, but it didn't really start that way. Early in the first, Halifax's first drive ends early. That's uh, Dekeel Chandler, and we've got Alex Marsteller with the pick six. And suddenly, JF with the lead. Second quarter up 6 nothing. Josiah Bell going up top. Floyd Wells hauling it in. And it's, again, all JF. But Halifax finally going to get it turned around. To kill Chandler going to Kanye Cattle, who gets over the tackler, and he's in for the touchdown. Early third, Halifax still da- down. It's Chandler to Cattle again. And Halifax comes all the way back for a 49-32 win. Amherst, the Lancers over Granby tonight, 39 to 14. And don't you talk that way, folks. Before we go to break, we go back to Rustburg, where they honored the Class 3 state champion softball team tonight. The Lady Red Devils finished the abbreviated spring season a perfect 17 and 0, downing New Kent 1 0 in the program's first state title since 97. And check out those rings, the state title bling. Well deserved, and we know we should never talk that way to Billy Idol. We should never talk that way. In Salem, the Spartans and Blue Demons collide. We'll see which one is doing the talking after. Meanwhile, the Titans look to remain perfect with the Cougars in for a visit, and the Bruins visit the Patriots in Roanoke City in another River Ridge ruckus plus this. All right, our thanks to Carroll County. We're back with the start of the River Ridge District Shakedown. This season, we've got a number of contenders. You could say they're lining up to take their shot at Salem. We see it every year. Can the Spartans continue to dominate? Well, as we've seen from the six weeks that we've had of football, it seems like Christiansburg might have had the best chance. Okay. So I was like, let's go and find out. Let's so that's exactly out. what I did for the okay. breakdown. Christiansburg is 4-0 heading into tonight. Salem 2-1. Lone loss to Martinsburg of West Virginia. This is the first time I've seen Salem in person this season, and they look pretty close to that state championship team just months ago. Clean, confident offense. Deron Wilson making shots like these. Salem went up 21-0 halfway through the second quarter, but there's a reason the Blue Demons are 4-0. It's not easy scoring against the Spartan defense, but Casey Graham did just that. Christiansburg kept getting stops in the second half. There's no question whether their defense can compete but I'm giving my gold star to Salem Secondary. Check that out. They held it down when the Demons went through the air. And, of course, it's not Salem if there's not big plays. That rocket to Chauncey Logan Jr. for the touchdown is on brand. Spartans with another dub, 24-7. They're a good football team. They're smart. They're physical. They have good speed, and they're well coached. It's a good football team. They they schemed us up up front, and... Things they always do, they're kind of spilling that and playing the backers over top. You know, and I was, I was pleased with their offensive line play, particularly in the first half. Um, you know, we uh, were able to move some people, and, you know, our running backs run hard like they always do. We were able to convert on third down. Be proud, but not satisfied. We're on to the next one. Christiansburg definitely had a shot tonight, but Appy, the team I've got my eyes on for a really good game against Salem is Hidden Valley, and I think you got some highlights from them next. Yeah, uh, no question about it. A lot of teams that are stepping up this year in the fall, and maybe maybe they weren't ones we were expecting. We'll see. The Titans have handled all kinds of challenges on their way to a 5-0 mark, including a 100-plus point shootout with Glenver, a wacky finish with Franklin County. Tonight, a more conventional challenge with the cute. Cougars of Pulaski. Here we go, and here comes Pulaski and Hidden Valley and Sam Dragovich to Ashton Carroll. Nice connection. He is wide open and slicing on in. 7-0 lead first quarter. Pulaski's J.J. Gully, though, going to play some D here. Little pick. The first of five turnovers by both teams in the first half. Hidden Valley later in the first half fumbled the ball twice. Pulaski threw two first-half interceptions. Chris Gallimore to John Lyman in the second quarter to give the Cougars a 14-7 lead. Wouldn't last, though. D.J. Banks pounding his way through the Cougars' defense to the end zone for Hidden Valley. This score was tied back up at 14-14. Hidden Valley led 21-14 at the half. They go on to a 28-20 win, and they are now 6-0. 
What about Blacksburg at PH tonight? Uh, PH three and one, and another one of those River Ridge teams looming in the distance. Joey Beasley corner fade, Carmelo Taylor, and PH had a three score lead. Bruins got some tough running here. This is Bryce Ferguson for the key first down, rolling into the Pat secondary to move the chains. But a bad snap here as we move to the second quarter. Ball is loose, and linebacker Troy Brown would come out with it right there. And that would set up Xavion Smith, who's going to trot right in for another score. PH, plenty of that tonight, 42 to nothing. All right, I've been here a while, and I don't recall ever covering a Madison County team. So, a first tonight, at least in my spotty memory, as they visit Perry McClure. Let's get you out and show you Perry McClure inducting six new members to their 2021 class Hall of Fame. Blues wasting no time. Brennan Shiley here to Jalen Mitchell, 49-yard connection, 8-0 in this game. Madison County, their kicker sets up here. Bad snap. Perry McClure would recover it deep in their territory. That's going to set up this touchdown. It's Shiley dropping back again. It's Jalen Mitchell again. 31 yards to the end zone. It's 16-0. Three seconds left in the first half. Shiley going to Mitchell again. He'll trot on in from 36 yards out to make it 24 to nothing. I want to show you one play in the third quarter. It did not count because of a penalty, but shades of Lynn Swan's great catch in the Super Bowl. Jalen Mitchell bringing it in right there. Again, it didn't count, but very nicely done. 30 to 8. Per McClure is victorious. Page County blanks the Chargers 42-0. Holston over Narrows 28 to 6. Castlewood better than Bland, 44-28. The Blue Devils of Grayson County, 18-7 over Fort Chiswell. One segment left, so Julia's last name is going to be Gulia. Julia, Gulia. The Bobcats hoping they're the ones singing after tonight's battle with the Mountaineers when we come back. All right, Craig County at Roanoke Catholic tonight, third quarter, tied at six. Running back Zachary Peters going up the middle, little misdirection here by the Rockets. Nice run, couple of plays later, Zachary Peters up the middle for the touchdown. Craig County up 14-6 after the two-point conversion. Still third quarter, Dylan Crawford, and he is going up the middle to make it 22-6. to Rockets. Later in the third, Rono Catholic responds. Aries Oliver going deep to Marquise Adams here. The connection, the turn burn, it was 22 to 12. Good game tonight. 34 18. Craig gets their second victory of the season. Meantime, Glenver set the pace in the Three Rivers. The contenders have to include the Bobcats, I would imagine, despite the fact that they ran into a red hot Christiansburg team last week. Right, and I saw them a couple weeks ago against Galax, and they are a good team. Obviously, Christiansburg has just been on a roll, but that doesn't change the fact that they were performing tonight. Radford's Elliott Grayson, he gets his 2A high jump state championship ring. Congrats, dude. Very nice. Bobcats up 7 0. Marcel Baylor goes Tecmo Bowl, Bo Jackson, which <laughs> I learned what this meant tonight because I was not born yet. But on the Mountaineers, he tight ropes the sidelines. 51-yard touchdown run, 14-0. Then Baylor showing off the arm here, finding Darius Wesley Brubeck, 60 yards to their second scoring connection. Quite the duo, those two. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, all right. Baylor not done showing off the moves. He is swiping off defenders. I've seen this play before, and it's never good for the other team. No. Those are facts. When he does that, yeah. Yeah, never, never good for the other team. And homecoming king Tyrell Dobson would cap off the first half scoring with a 16-yard touchdown run, 35 nothing at half for Radford, 42 to six. The Bobcats get the win over Allegheny. Over in Carroll County, they're hosting Floyd County. Carroll County enters Floyd County, strikes first. Jackson Brewer on the rollout goes deep to Caden Swartzel, who goes 75. Yards for the touchdown. Floyd goes up early. Carroll County fighting back. Elijah Cox finds Sheldon Leonard. One oh. move, and he's gone. Yeah, nice and it's 
tied 6 nothing. That was slick. Yeah, that was slick. That was real slick. And the cheerleaders like it, of course. Second half, Floyd County on the move. Jackson Brewer again. Handoff is fumbled. Elijah Slavy is Johnny on the spot. Carroll County in business looking good, but Floyd can bring the defense to Cox back to pass. Freddie Garcia right through with a huge sack. Happy, this one goes to overtime. Floyd wins it 20 to 18. Yeah, I want to mention Floyd blocked the, the field goal at the end of regulation that would have won it for Carroll County. Went to overtime and they got the victory. Wow, goodness. Nice job, Buffaloes. All right, PHK Glade Springs beats Rural Retreat 27 0 and Chill Howie beats Honaker 37 to 28. Thank you, Brooke. The Blue Ridge District has been pretty quiet this fall so far tonight. William Byrd trying to make some noise with Cave Spring in. Let's have a look and see how this one went down. First quarter, Cave Spring quarterback is Skylar Griffiths going to Cameron Parker for the long connection right here. Very nicely done. That's going to set up a touchdown pass. It's Griffiths going to Landon Altizer to make it 7-0 Knights. In this one, nice connection, and there's the touchdown. A little bit later on, second quarter, William Byrd. It's Israel Hairston. We've got a fumble recovered by Cave Spring in William Byrd territory. A few plays later, Skylar Griffiths quarterback sneak to make it 14-0. Little power push there. Still second quarter. We got some defense from Byrd. Dylan Anderson with the pick out there. Nice catch. Kept this one in check. Knights hold on 27-14. Chatham blanks Nelson 56 0. Gretna over William Campbell 38 14. The Raiders rolling again over Alta Vista 48 10. And earlier this afternoon, North Cross gets a win at Blue Ridge 59 6. Two of the top non Power 5 programs in the nation colliding Saturday night. 3 1 Liberty at 3 1 UAB, the defending conference USA champs. Obviously, it's a great, great test, and that's what you want in this game. And uh, it'll test ourselves for sure. We won't be uh, the fan favorite there. We'll probably be outnumbered considerably, and uh, I understand that, and we've got to embrace that. It's going to be a challenge because uh, everybody's coming out there playing to the best of their ability and trying to come home with a win. So I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, those guys are really good this year. and. Uh, we, we get to open up their new stadium. That's a pretty cool thing, you know. Indeed, the Blazers will host their first ever game inside that new, brand new campus, 47,000 seat protective stadium. It's a 7 p.m. Eastern kick on the CBS Sports Network. Uh, Saturday college football, including the battle for the Silver Shaco, Washington and Lee at Hampton, Sydney. ACC game to watch. Pitt at Georgia Tech. Randolph Macon at Ferrum. I should say Randolph Macon is at Ferrum. That is correct. That's going to do it for another week. It was a fine show indeed. Lucky 7 is up next next week. Yeah, we will see you then.